So when people come to me with migraines, oftentimes they are so desperate because it's an invisible disability. It's not seen the kind of pain people are suffering. It could be that it's a severe headache, but there are lots of other symptoms that's not pain related. So it could be change in thinking speed, it could be change in mood. It's, you know, can't quite get the words right. This constant fog feeling. Yeah. So there are lots of and also, of course, there, there are visual symptoms, which is where I come in with, which is why I see a lot of people with migraine because they first have the visual symptoms and then they kind of get really very terrified. And of course, then we realize it's migraines. So oftentimes it starts off with uh, people feeling desperate. And they, what all they may know is taking painkillers. And the first step I do is actually education about what migraine is about. So that is a neurological condition. It's to do with uh, sensory processing of the brain uh, being affected. And it's influenced by genetics and external factors. So external factors would be things that I've, I speak about through my brains program, which is a sleep, the uh, metabolic health, the gut health, uh, you know, and we talk about stress management. There is this really, really important thing about um, understanding the ups and downs of stress. I already said it's not about stress is bad, it's actually our response to it. We need both the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. We need to be able to get up and go. We also need to be able to oh, let go and relax. And for people with migraine, there is this very common phenomenon that is a weekend migraine or a vacation migraine. So unfair because they would have been working so hard, hitting a deadline, and then the first moment they can relax, bang, migraine comes. And then they are down. They can't enjoy the time with their family or their own leisure time. So, so if we talk about how we balance that. So it could be things such as breath work. It could be mindfulness-based techniques. If it's okay, I want to talk a little bit more about mindfulness. I, I love the concept of bringing mindfulness into neurological uh, research. So one of the things I've been doing is I, I as you know, I'm really passionate about lifestyle medicine. And as part of all this, I want to make sure I'm certified in this, certified in that. It's a very doctor thing, but we want to be certified in everything. <laughs> and of course, I just want to make sure I'm delivering it appropriately. So as I was doing my certification in delivering mindfulness, I was so touched by a documentary on John Kabat-Zinn. In 1980s, John Kabat-Zinn, who was in Massachusetts General, developed an eight-week program for chronic pain. It's an eight-week program using mindfulness. It's called mindfulness. It was evolved to call mindfulness-based stress reduction. And the training I was doing is, an, is, a, is a next, uh, a version of it. It's called mindfulness-based cognitive therapy. 